Hello everyone, it's Jen. Welcome back to my channel. I'm so glad you're here with me today. Today's video is four more 4th of July projects for party or home decor. So let's go ahead and head on down to the craft table and get started. Okay, so in our first craft, we are going to be doing a reversed canvas. And if you haven't seen reversed canvas before, um, I do have a video that I will link in the top corner. Um, I have done another one, but these are really easy and super fun. They are, you can use a canvas pretty much from anywhere. This particular canvas is from Dollar Tree and these work really, really well. So, you know, for $1.25, I don't know that you can beat that for an amazing uh, piece of wall art. So how a reverse canvas works is normally you would put your art here, but what we're going to do is I'm going to use my tree control knife and we are going to trim off around here and take the canvas off of the frame. Next, we're going to um, put our design on the canvas, but then we're going to put the frame on top of that. So it'll It'll look like a picture frame like you would normally have and they're just super easy and they're really fun and they're super cost effective. So we'll get started on that in just a moment. And putting the canvas back on, by the way, you do have the option of using hot glue or even a staple gun. So, uh, you know, it really is up to you how you turn around and, and put this um, back together. So the design that I have for this particular project is our Pledge of Allegiance. This is iron on vinyl. And the thing I like to do about iron on vinyl, especially when you have more than one color, is I don't like, if at all possible, I don't like to press it more than once, so to speak. Um, in other words, I didn't want to put down the blue and press then the red and press, and then the black and press. So what I did is I, I cut out all three colors of my vinyl and the black wording, I was able to use smaller pieces of the black vinyl. So that was a good scrap buster. And then for the red and the blue, I did use, you know, a pretty substantial piece of vinyl and I weeded them. And then I just looked and I, I was looking for which particular sheet had the most blank space. And that happened to be the blue one. So then what I did is I laid my blue one down on my mat like this. And I just grabbed some painter's tape and I taped the four corners down. And then I went through and I trimmed down the carrier sheet of the red um, vinyl and I I had design space open on my computer and I just pieced this is this was actually a really easy thing to piece together and I used the grid lines of my glass mat to help keep everything lined up and straight but um, I pieced the red items and those are the ones that look like they're white on here um, the back of the red vinyl is white. So anyway, I pieced them into place and I made sure that the carrier sheet of the red vinyl was not covering any blue parts whatsoever. And then I went through and I did the same thing with the black lettering. I trimmed the black lettering down so that I could put it where it needed to go but I didn't want the carrier sheet of the black lettering to cover any of the red or the blue vinyl. I um, was able to piece everything together on one carrier sheet. So all I have to do with my Easy Press Mini, and that's what I'm going to use today instead of my large press, simply so that I can monitor the project is I can do all of this at one time and I don't have to continually press a whole thing to get um, the result that I want. You certainly do not have to do this method 
I just have done some large t-shirt orders and I found that based on the design that they wanted, it was a lot easier and it was a cleaner look to press everything at one time than it was to press each color layer. And um, that's just my little suggestion, but feel free to do what works for you. Okay, so let's go ahead and set this aside and get started on our canvas. So to do a reverse canvas, the first thing we're going to do is I'm just going to take my tool control knife and I am going to cut around these staples and I want to go as close as possible and then we're going to be pulling this up. So this tool control knife is really, really nice. I really enjoy working with it. If your staple is way too close to the edge, um, like right here and right here, I'm going to try and I'm going to go ahead and go on that other side, but um, I have just found that it's, it's pretty easy to just cut the canvas. The first time I did this, I didn't know that it would be really, really easy, but it it actually is extremely easy. Okay, I'll set that aside. And then you basically, you go through and you, you start lifting the canvas. And it can be helpful to keep your knife handy for like a spot like this. Just going to keep pulling this up and then you can pull away this interior part here like you, you don't really need that so how is everyone doing today it is um, June 27th next week is 4th of July and summer is summer is pressing on can't believe it's already been pretty much a month. I feel like I haven't done anything. <laughs> well, we haven't. We've had basketball camp and I've had some projects and unfortunately um, we've had some summer sickness, which, you know, I just don't like that. I think that should be against the rules. Summer sickness should not be allowed. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and finish up getting this taken off, and then we'll move on to our next step. <laughs> So here is our frame and this is the color of the wood. Now I am wondering if I want to take a very quick break and do just like a little um, wash of brown just to kind of marry this particular color and this particular color. So I think I might do that. Um, and I'll just pause the video so that I can be mindful of your time. But um, this is what your canvas looks like. Okay, so it looks like that. And I will tell you that um, I think I did okay, but definitely use tools because your fingernails, your fingernails are jewels, not tools. So I would definitely... Um, have that in place. So, okay. So here is our canvas, and I am. I'm going to go ahead and press this 
and then I think I'll deal with the frame. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm just going to very lightly and gently go over the canvas. I don't want to go too crazy with that. And you don't need to worry about these folds. And then I'm going to bring in the frame because it's going to be like so. And I just want to use this to help me get this in place. I'm going to put this down. And, uh, oh, I had a piece of fuzz in there. see that this is okay I think that it's pretty straight and um, we'll be trimming down all of this stuff in a little bit but um, I'm just double checking and make sure that nothing looks like it's overlapping because I don't want to um, I don't want to iron vinyl onto another curry sheet. So then I'm just going to go in here and I'm going to be very mindful of monitoring the project. <laughs> draw out the heat. If you leave it on your easy press mat, it really stays hot for quite a while, but when you take it off, it really just, it cools down almost instantly. It's really, really neat. Okay, let's see how well this transferred. So it looks like I have a little eye issue over here. This is a carrier sheet for the blue layer. I thought I saw something. I saw some lifting over here. Okay, so I just made a classic mistake. When I pulled this up, I noticed that the blue wasn't staining down. And then I hung it and put my heat on top of it. So that I'm gonna have to recut that star, but that'll be that'll be okay. So if that's the only little star I have to fix, then that'll be okay. Alright, that top part is good. And then so this is what I meant earlier by making sure that your red layer and your blue layer did not um, overlap. So apparently on this end, I overlapped those blue stars with the, I had the red. So I'll have to cut those back out and I can just you know, I can just press those on by themselves. Let's see. And I think I did the same thing on this side. And that'll be okay. I've got to paint that wood anyway. So I'm just going to trim this off. And if that ever happens, 
I'm going to leave these blue stars, you know, right here. I might just kind of trim off that little part. And I'm just going to press over them with the new blue star. And you'll never know. No one would ever absolutely know that that was an issue when everything is said and done. What I was meaning earlier about not letting things overlap. And sometimes it's hard to see. Um, and so you just, you have to test it out. And, but for the most part, I think, like I've probably done a hundred shirts and I would say maybe three I've had this happen with. So I think that's a pretty good track record. Okay. And then I did this right here. Okay. All right. So we are, we are going to, I'm going to put the back on a little bit. This is actually really, really good, except for four stars and a blue flag piece. So I will, off camera, I will cut out four new blue stars and a piece of the blue flag, which will be super quick and easy. And then I will come back in and lay them over those pieces and just press them back down and then no one would ever know that that was an issue. So I'm going to save this large carrier sheet for that process. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and do that off camera and then I'll be back. And okay, so we are back with four newly cut stars and a new flag. So this is going to work really well. Um, I've got two here and we'll just lay this down in the places where it needs to go and then do a quick press and then we can put on our costume. So now this, um, this flag has super tiny little stars. I don't know if you can see those super tiny, tiny little stars. They are, they are really tiny. All right, so let's bring in our easy press mat. Put that down. And I'm going to reuse that big carrier sheet just to keep everything um, protected. So the first thing, I'm going to line up that blue part of my flag. And I don't need to. I just need to make sure that I don't... Um, touch the other vinyl. Okay, let me see if that's good to go. So I'll let that sit for a minute. And okay, so with these stars, I am going to literally just place this down just like that. And same thing on this side. There we go. Okay. And then I'm just going to repress those. So in that huge order of like a 400 shirts, no, not really 400, but it was a really big t-shirt order. There was like, oh, I think it's, like I said, there was about three where I had inadvertently overlapped some carrier sheet and I had to do some creative piecing. It looks like this little piece right here needs a little more time. Okay, so I'm going to pull this off. I'm going to pull this 
off and I'm going to let that sit for a minute. And I noticed on this D, this D just needs a little spot treatment. Okay, and hopefully everything else is good. I like that blade down really nicely. I don't feel anything here. Well, maybe that little tiny T right here. One thing I really like about this mini is you can literally just spot press something instead of the entire thing. Okay, I'm gonna check on my stars. Beautiful. And beautiful again. Okay. And perfect. It's ready to go. I'm going to move this out of the way. Okay. So the next thing is to bring in this frame. So what I did earlier is I went over it with a chestnut paint that I had and I wasn't really keen on the, it kind of had an, uh, chestnuts kind of got an orange undertone and so I then went over it with a little bit of chalk paint just to kind of distress it. And so essentially what we're going to do is get this lined up like so. Okay, what I'm going to do just to help me hold is I'm going to put a tiny bit of double sided tape on the back um, just to help me hold it where I need it while, while I get it stapled. Normally this is not something that I would do but I think it'll be helpful. Okay. And another thing before before we do that, once we get it where we want it, okay, I think that looks good. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down the frame and I'm just going to go along the canvas on my mat. And I'm just going to, you know, cut off, I'm going to trim off the part that I don't need. Okay, and that should lift up really easily. And then you can just throw that away. So I'm going to use my staple gun and that means that I'm literally just going to turn this over and line it up. So then I'm just going to come back here. Now on this side over here, probably can move it just ever so slightly this way. So then I'm just going to go around and I'm going to work kind of one side and then go across to the other side. So then on this side I will stretch that down and then I'll work from the middle to the outer part. So this is what our canvas looks like and then I like to just double check and see like if I were to hang this on the wall would there be any overhang and I see a little bit down here all right I don't see any more overhang so this 
is now finished. So our reverse canvas, this is the Pledge of Allegiance, and it is now finished. And I think it looks really good. I am so pleased with this, even with my little um, hiccup with having the uh, vinyl iron onto the carrier sheet. I was able to easily fix that, and I did leave it in because I wanted you to see what you can do to recover with the iron on when that happens. Easily recoverable. All right, let's move on to craft number two. So for craft number two, I have a table runner and it's approximately three feet long and only about um, eight, well, about seven inches wide maybe. But um, I got a red and a blue and these came from Dollar Tree and I just thought it would be a really neat thing for like the picnic table or or something during the party. So what I wanted to do was take some some outlines of stars using silver glitter iron on and I thought this would be a great project for that. And on here, most of them are all the same size that I'm going to be putting them on, but there are about three stars that are slightly bigger. So I have three outlines that are slightly bigger, and I have 13 that are all the same size. So let's, um, I'm going to just pull off these little stickers here, or stickers, stars. And I'm actually, I am going to hold on to them because I can always stick them back to the carrier sheet and use them for um, another project. But I'm just going to take these out one at a time, set them aside, and then I'm going to cut apart all of the um, little stars. Just kind of a rough cut. And then we'll get them pressed onto the red runner. And I think the red runner is like a felt. So that means it will be, um, we're gonna put it on low, which is just one wavy line, and about 30 seconds using that firm constant pressure. And then we'll do a cool peel. But I thought that would just really dress up an otherwise very plain, inexpensive runner. But, you know, if something spills on it or it, you know, if something happens to it during a barbecue, it's really not that, not that ginormous of, of a deal. Okay, so we got all of those. I'm going to just move them out of the way. Guys, I will tell you, this is a treat. I have been using my weeding tool now for, oh, I don't know, almost seven months. And I've noticed that I've had a really hard time picking up vinyl with it. And I thought, well, maybe it was getting dull. And I tried to like sharpen the end and make sure it was clean, all that good stuff. So I absolutely love my True Control knife. I use it every time I craft. And I found that, actually it was a suggestion from another um, crafter um, viewer, and basically this is the True Control um, system, and it comes with, it comes with the, just the straight poke um, weeder, um, it comes with a curved one, it has a little hook on the end, it does have another, another knife blade, and then it's got your weeding tool. And this is the neatest thing ever. First of all, it is working like a charm. So that tells me that my original weeding tool was definitely, I guess I just crick it way too much. But essentially what you do is it has a lock, so you unlock it, and you push the button, and this, this gets released, and then you can... Put this wherever you need it to be and then if you're changing a tool or whatever so when how you put it together is 
as you can tell by the um, the way they're they're shaped but you hold on to the you push the button in you put this in goes all the way down and then you lock it and it it's I mean it's on there this is the best thing I have ever used I'm I'm so pleased and I really like the um, kind of the thicker part of the handle I don't know it just it feels better in my hand and it's working like a charm so I am so happy that I got a new weaving tool because I was a little sad that um, I was having trouble weeding my vinyl okay well be that as it may I am going to cut these apart and then we're going to get these pressed on to the runner so we're all cut out and I am going to start with the three stars that are larger and my idea was that just like so doesn't that look pretty like I haven't even pressed it that looks great okay so here we go and I'm just using firm pressure and constant movement you can see that this is already it looks like it's already laying down one and we'll do the next one now I'm not using my pressing mat for this particular this is really this runner is super thick like this isn't even touching my glass mat here's two and our third one and then we're going to take a look and see how these are doing so this is the first one I did so I'm going to test it goodness that laid down perfectly look at that oh I love it and who doesn't love sparkle especially on 4th of July okay so I'm gonna peel up these other two see I'm still a little warm so the next Thing will be to take these stars and just put them along all of the places that look like this so I'm gonna go ahead and do that while I speed up the video so in the meantime enjoy yourself your favorite beverage <laughs> So this is our red runner. This went from way, it just went from drab to fab. Oh my goodness. That is just amazing. So something that I was thinking about while I was pressing those was two things. This would be great at Christmas time. I mean, just look at it. Red, sparkle silver, just great. This is definitely a twofer also if you were like my niece she's on a cheer team and one of their colors is red and one I forget what the other one is but red and I want to say blue actually I want to say red blue and then sparkling silver so ironically like at their cheer banquet you know maybe on an entry table or something just an easy little inexpensive craft to dress up the place and then the, the next thing I thought of is instead of saving these for something else that I don't know if it would work anyway, is these middles, I could put them here. And so this would be the blue runner and it would have the solid middles 
and that would be different than this one. So I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take off, let's see, I'm going to take off the little paper here and then I will lay out several stars at one time and then just use the pressing mat, I mean the the uh, carrier sheet and cover all of them. So let's go ahead and get that done and then that actually is great. Um, I'm glad I thought of that. <laughs> Okay, so this turned out just as fabulous as the previous one, and I'm so glad that I thought of that because I wasn't 100% confident that my other idea would work with those stars. So now I have two table runners for the barbecue, and one has solid and one has outlines. This one can double for Christmas and other events that red might be a theme. And this could definitely go for something else like Labor Day, or not Labor Day, Memorial Day. Um, we could use these for Veterans Day, Memorial Day, Armed Services Day, and 4th of July, of course. So these are a winner. Great, great decor for literally $2.50. Okay, this wraps up craft number two, so let's um, go ahead and start craft number three. Okay, so for craft number three, I thought it would be fun to take some of these wood blocks. I have like quite a few of these, and I painted them. I actually just used one coat of chalk paint. I didn't make it super um, uh, thick or heavy. And then I drilled a hole in the top, you know, just about maybe, um, maybe a, not even a quarter of an inch. And I just went down, you know, about this much. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be putting hot glue into the hole. And we're going to put some uh, little jute twine to come up, kind of like a candle wick. And then each one of these is going to get a design. So I have here... I have a blue star design and what I did is I measured the height of the candle so to speak and then I measured like how wide one side was and multiplied that by four to get a complete length and so then that allowed me to have this and I'm just going to use some transfer tape but before I do that I want to see if I can rescue these little stars I have um, some cards that I need to send out and I wanted them um, I send a lot of cards for military personnel and stuff. Actually, that one's solid. Let's see. So there's a few stars that are going to come up here. And these can always be used on those cards. So I hate to, I hate to throw them away um, when they're perfectly good stars that can be utilized on a card. Solid, solid, solid. And not all of these are outlines. Some of them are solid. But the, they could totally be reused. And that would be a great way to rescue them. 
Okay, so there are my stars. Wait, I'm gonna take this transfer tape here. Now this is paper transfer tape. Um, and I am just going to use it. Um, I like, it won't pull up all of the paint. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that down here. It's a low tack tape, kind of like masking tape. And the beauty is that it's very gentle on the surface that you're putting it on. So, okay, and usually when I use this tape, these designs are so small, I don't really need to use my Scraper tool, usually. So let's see if my fingers did a good enough job. Let's see them. Oh, there's a middle that I need to rescue. Okay, let me grab that really fast. There we go. We'll set that down on that carrier sheet. Okay, so my idea was that I would put the candle and this this will absolutely I think this will fit one of the shades in. Okay. I do that let me cut this down I don't know that I need all this extra okay. so then my thought was literally I would put the transfer tape at one edge and then lay the candle down like this and then just wrap it around continuously and then giving that a good burnish. Let me grab my burnishing tool. That was super easy. It's just wrapping that around there. Okay, and then you just start pulling the transfer tape up like and just unwrapping the candle as we go around and yay this is working I love it when the ideas in my head actually work <laughs> okay so here is one candle and again, like I said, we're going to put some hot glue and some jute twine in there for the wick. Okay, so then on these next two, I have some vertical lines and I have some horizontal lines. So, okay, this super tall one, this is real tall. And just going to pull off. Outer, and I'm literally just going to pull up one row at a time and put them here on this carrier sheet because these can be absolutely used. could make a flag. I can just use them for stripes on a card. This red stripes. I just hate to toss really good vinyl that is a substantial size. Over here makes me think of the blue star 
family emblem. I think I might need one of those. Okay, so that's off to the side. And then I was going to do the exact same thing that I did before. I am literally just going to face down the transfer tape. And these lines are a little more substantial, so I thought they could use a burnish. Okay, so here are our stripes and then I'm just going to repeat that process. That's good. I'm going to put that there. Get my hands out of the way. And then just start wrapping this around. Okay. And burnish all the sides. This is definitely easier than painting. I just wasn't feeling the paint painting anymore today. And it's definitely easier than placing all of these as individual stickers. And then we'll just peel and reveal like we did on the last one. So here's our second one. That looks good. And now we have our third one. Now the third one, the stripes are going vertical. That carrier sheet for these. So we went to Hobby Lobby today. I wanted to get a t-shirt for our oldest daughter's daughter. She's four and I wanted to send her a little 4th of July shirt and she's really tiny but apparently she's super tall. So I had bought an extra small shirt and yeah the more I looked at it I was like mm, I'm wondering if she's a little bit the size will fit her extra small but lengthwise she's way taller now so I have to take it back before I can make her a shirt but that is okay so I think I will do that tomorrow all right so this particular transfer tape is a little too short let's see I think I have an extra piece Perfect. That was, that was great. Just burnish this down. Okay, perfect. Found out today, another good thing that happened today is found out that our, our soldier son gets to come home. So he will be here on Sunday. Course we have to travel to get to the airport so that'll be like a little road trip very early in the morning <laughs> that's okay all right stripes are exactly the height of this candle do that piece. Now the good thing about using vinyl on here is that I can always remove this decor and use these for another, like I could put, you know, birthday stuff on here. I could do Christmas, but 
these are what the candles look like. Okay, so now I'm going to grab the twine. Okay, this is the twine that I'm using, and I want to say I got this at Walmart, but to be honest, I really don't remember. I have had this forever. But basically what I'm going to do is I want to know how much twine will go to the bottom. And it kind of feels like the bottom. And then I don't want it to stand up very tall. So I'm thinking like that. And then that's what it'll look like. So we're going to do that. going to put a couple of hooks in there and then lower that down in there. So there's one candle. That's so cute. Oh my goodness. Okay. And since I am not sure exactly the depth of every single one, I have to do them kind of all separately. Twisting them as you push them in is also very helpful. So here's my second one. And last one. say I'm really that's you know an inch give or take right so whatever looks good to you and there we go and I'm gonna turn this little one away okay so this is craft number three and this came out so good. I am really, really pleased with this. So again, another, you know, easy decor, very inexpensive. And um, now that we're done with craft number three, we'll move on to our fourth and final craft. So for craft number four, I am using two glass trivets. Now I picked these up at Dollar Tree as well. Um, basically all of these crafts today, I've been shopping my craft stash. And by the way, all of a sudden, whoever is outside is either doing some sort of street construction or lawn work. So I apologize if you can hear the heavy machinery outside. I'm not sure which one it is. It sounds more like heavy machinery than it does yard equipment. Okay. But essentially what I want to do is I want to take these and turn them over so that the feet are facing up toward me. Okay, they have four little feet. These are really nice glass trivets, by the way. And <clears throat> then I am going to be placing some stars on here. And I'm going to try, I thought about, I could just place them like stickers, but I don't know if I want to do that. So what I'm going to try to do is layer them smartly. And what I mean by that is there are four different colors. So there's a white layer. This is more of the filler stars. And then there are two reds. And then so like two of the red stars go on top. And one of the, the bright red stars goes underneath. So basically... I've got three red stars on here, and one of them is going to get a layer on top, and the other two are going to be layered underneath these dark red 
stars. And then on the other trivet, it will be swapped where he, two of these will be on top and one will be underneath. And I did the same thing for the blue pair. So just like this. So the, for the blue pair. Um, and I have the picture up on my phone. So worst case scenario, I will layer them individually and put them on like I would either a sticker or with a small piece of transfer tape. What I'm hoping is that I can layer the whole thing all at once. So what I've done is for each of these squares, is I essentially have, um, I've just kind of, it's like a big box. And it does use quite a bit of vinyl. Um, but I thought that it might be easier. So I'm going to give it a go and see what happens. Um, and if the sec if this first one is a little more difficult to do that way, then I will just do it how I normally would. Let's see, we've got five stars hanging out on this particular sheet. And now you could save this carrier sheet here in a moment and then put the spec on there. So I might just try that. Okay, so what I want to do is grab some transfer tape and going to try and use up some of my scraps, which means I will be overlapping my transfer tape, which is totally fine. And so these trivets are eight by eight. And I don't think I need to Save that to my piece. So here is one piece of transfer tape and then the other one. So I'm just going to layer them with a well, the overlap essentially. those stars. There's not very many. There's only five. So I'll pull that off. I'm going to bring this in. And I just have some bubble wrap because I don't want glass clinking on the glass. That would that would be like nails on a chalkboard. So I'm just going to pin it off. And I am just using adhesive vinyl, obviously, so that you know, these trivets can be changed out with the season. Okay. So let's see. Oh, that came up very nicely. Okay, according to my picture, this goes in. bubble wrap is popping <laughs> under the weight of my burnishing. That's okay. And then I'm just going to pull up Oops. And for the moment I'm just going to place it right back down on this carrier sheet. 
I do like to try new methods because you never know. And I'm a firm believer in that we can do hard things. Okay, according to my picture, this one is going to be a top star, and these two are going to be bottom stars. So let me read this one. Okay, so here's what I think. I think the smartest thing is to grab that small piece and the star that goes on top of here, I'm just going to transfer that. And then I will put that on this one. Like that. <clears throat> These two go down on here. So what I think that I will do is I will transfer these to here. Okay, so I'm just going to place this down here. And I'm going to place that. Can you see a little outline on here from the other two stars? So I think that's where I'm going to do this little maneuver. Because I can see the cut line. Okay. Wow, that's perfect. That went exactly where I needed it to go. And then this one. So the cut line is right here. Okay, perfect. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and pull this one up. Set that aside. And then I will bring in my large transfer tape piece. Now I can lay all of this down at one time. It actually worked, well, not the exact way I had envisioned. Like I was definitely winging it there to be fully honest with you. My original plan, I wasn't real confident in. But I think this is going to be just fine. up this carrier sheet and then this okay I totally just realized that I should have put everything on this side because if I lay these down on the back then the I think I'm going to have to redo the white stars, but that's okay. Not a big deal. These are just for party purposes anyway. I am not looking for food safe. So with that being said, I am going to have to redo the white stars. Not a big deal at all. Um, maybe I can recover those and put them here. But these... I won't have to worry about the feet. Nice recovery. We're going to go with that. I don't know why I was thinking that it needed to go on the back. I think that's because I would normally put the vinyl on the back. All is well. Nice recovery. Perfect. Okay.
So this is what it's going to be ending up looking like. And these white stars here, I'm just going to have to bring them back to the front. Or I can recut them and then put them on the front. Okay, so now we're down to our red layer. So same process. I'm just going to rinse and repeat. I'm curious. Have you ever dreamt up a craft and then when it actually was in play, you, you had to kind of make adjustments literally on the fly? I'm wondering, is it just me? <laughs> is it just me that does these little faux pas of crafting maneuvers. This particular vinyl here, this is brick red. It's from Expressions Vinyl. That is like butter. Bring back in our small pieces. And according to our picture, these two go on top there. So I will just put these These two will go on there, and I'm going to leave everything on this carrier sheet. This one goes here, and then I'll transfer it back over there. Okay. Now, the difference in these reds are not as overtly obvious as the blues, but still, it's a great, it's a great contrast either way. Okay, so there we have it. I am going to, off camera, I am going to bring those around to the front and then wrap this up with the other one as well. Okay, great news. I was able to recover the white stars and this looks so much better having it all on one side. And so this will make a nice trivet out on the picnic table, nice and festive. So let's go ahead and do the second one. And I think that one will go a whole lot faster now that I actually kind of have the system down since my plan had to change several times. All right, let's get going. I'm going to bring in the rubbing alcohol, clean that surface off. Where we like last time was the white layer, and this will go in the same orientation as before. Okay, that is our white layer. Okay, so I'm going to set this aside and go on to our red layer. That went well. Okay, and then big piece of transfer tape. Bring in this guy right here. Okay, and now on to our blue layer. Question of the day is, if you, if you and your family have a, like a cookout or whatever for 4th of July, what are your favorite dishes to serve? You know, are you um, pretty traditional with, you know, hamburgers, hot dogs, all of that? Or do you guys have a, like specialties, um, you know, like brisket or ribs? And what are your favorite 
dessert. And part two of that, do you go out and watch fireworks somewhere or do you, do you have fireworks at home with the family? Let me know down in the comments what kind of festivities, you know, if you, if you do plan festivities, what are your family favorites? We tend to have um, a big cookout, yard games, etc. Then my parents, they split a huge pallet of fireworks with the neighbor that's across the street. And so they go in together and the neighbor is the one that puts the show on. And then we, our city puts on fireworks and a parade and all kinds of goodness. But there are so many people. Definitely one of those days where it is too people-y outside. So I really enjoy the family, the family festivities. I do hope that we have good weather next week because... It is notorious for storming, not always, but enough to make the kids really nervous and upset that they're not going to get to see fireworks. In fact, I think last year, last year we had to, um, we had to do our fireworks the day after the 4th of July. It was just, it was so windy. We, we, there was no way we would have started a huge wildfire and that would have not been good. So, and that's even with all the hoses and buckets that we like to have out. All right, this is our last color. Okay, last one. Let's see here. Beautiful. Oh my goodness, this is wonderful. Okay, so there we have. We have our third craft, and this is, these are the trivets side by side. So you can see what I was trying to do is like have reverses um, of the colors and just make them a little bit different. But um, okay, well, let's go ahead and take a look at all four crafts that were done today and decide which one gets the honor of the favorites. Here is the recap of the four crafts that we did today. Craft number one was the reverse canvas with the Pledge of Allegiance in three different colors of iron on vinyl. And I really like this one. In fact, I've decided that I am probably going to take this to my classroom and post it next to the flag. Not that my high schoolers don't know the Pledge of Allegiance, but just because it's cool looking. Okay, so there's this one. And then craft number two was more iron on. This was glitter iron on. And I cut all the stars out. I used the outlines for one runner and the solids for another. And these are just going to look really good on the tables for um, the 4th of July. So I'm real excited about those. Plus, they can be reused for other purposes, different times. Craft number three were these really cute candles and just chalk paint and some vinyl that can be removed if wanted in the future. And then some jute twine just hot glued into some holes that I drilled into the top. So definitely... Um, definitely have some use for that. And then finally, trivets for the um, hot 
dishes and these look great. I'm really pleased at how those actually came out in the end. Um, and, uh, you know, challenged me a little bit to think outside of the box. And I just love them. So I, you know, I, I love all of these. These are all really hard to choose from. But I think maybe today these few candles are probably my favorite just because they're different and they're unique and of course they were super easy to put together but just not something that I normally try and um, I saw a, something online similar and thought oh I can totally do something like that and so here we go well I hope that you found this video was informative and inspirational to you to create some um, 4th of July decor or gifts and enjoy next week with your friends and family. And um, don't forget our men and women that are in the service both here and abroad, especially the ones that are deployed as they won't be home to celebrate with family. And um, if you did enjoy today's video, don't forget to share it with your crafty friends. Hit that like button. It does help the channel to continue to grow and subscribe if you are not already. Don't forget that notification bell so you can get reminded when I post a video. And until I see you in the next video, as always, happy crafting. Thank you all so much for watching today. I'm so glad that you can join me at my craft table. If you're not already, I'd love to have you as a subscriber and don't forget to hit that notification bell. That way you'll know when new videos arrive. Have a great day and as always, happy crafting.